with you this morning. The Lord bless you. And my prayer is this, that he opens up your ears Amen. to hear the word of God. He opens up your heart to receive the word of God. And he encourages your life to live out the word of God. For the scripture says we're not just to be hearers of the word only. We're to be doers of the word. You know, I'm sure there's times that Jim and Carl and I think we've said a lot, but we won't see a whole lot getting done. There are times we say a little bit and say a lot gets done. But I want the Lord to be in charge of everything that happens here. I want to be under his authority all the time. I want to make sure that what he gives me to give you, I got from him and not from me. His, his word is so important. But I can tell you, probably the most unused book all week long was the Holy Bible. I would suggest that there are some sitting here. Even if you have your Bible on your phone, you don't check the Bible on your phone any other time except here. Some of you carry a Bible with you and it stays in your car when you get home. Or it goes in your house and sits on your dresser. You may not open it again. I can tell you what time Jim has, what time Carl has, and what time I have to, to feed you the Word of God, it's not going to be enough to grow you up in the Word of God. Because who we are, we're feeding you. You need to grow up and feed yourself some. Amen. You need to stay in the Word of God Amen. all the time. The Word of God says Amen. it's a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. And if you hide its words in your heart, you're not going to sin against Him. Now, it didn't say you're going to be perfect, but your life, if you've been in Christian, if you've been in relationship with God through Christ and you're empowered by the Holy Spirit, you ought to be having victory after victory after victory instead of failure after failure after failure. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when I stand here with the Word of God, I, I, I know I've done weeks, and I'm okay with this. Because I'm just the spokesman for God. When people don't walk that out, they haven't said no to me. They've said no to Him. There's times I, I, I preach. I'm not saying in this church, but other churches I preach. I preach six, seven, eight weeks, sometimes uh, six months. Nobody would walk an aisle. And I knew the people I was ministering to because I was there 23 years. I knew their lives. And I knew they needed what God said. But you can see them getting their hands on the back of the pew and their knuckles turning white because they didn't want to let go. Now, I've not been with y'all that long. I don't know that I'll live 23 more years, by the way. But if I do and I have my mind, Lord wants me to stay here 23 years, and guess what I'll do? I'll be here and I'll know you a little bit better. And I can walk up to you at the service and say, why didn't you come? You see, that's not my place. The Bible says it's the role of the Holy Spirit to convict of sin, to convict of righteousness, and judgment. So, under God, I always promise Him that if He'll lead, I'll do His part through me. And I want Him to speak through me. I want the Holy Spirit in this place, not just for me to preach but for you to hear. Because if you hear and don't do, guess what you've just done? You've sinned before God. And you're mocking God saying, I can do it without you during the week. No, you can't. You've got to have Him like He's got you. He's got you 24-7. You need to surrender your life to Him every moment of every day because you can't make it a step without Him. There are people today who are at home and we're praying for them 
because they feel like they're held. They're being attacked by the enemy to keep them spiritually sick. I've already prayed for this man, for God to give him the spirit of overcomer and to guard his health so he can be back with us here to worship. We've got to make sure that we stay before God so we'll hear the voice of God to know we can do the work of God with the power of God. Now that's just the first sermon that wasn't planned. If you would open your Bibles to Luke chapter 10. We're going to start in verse 30. It says, Jesus replied and said, but that's the beginning of verse 30. But what he's replying to was an individual, an individual came up to Jesus, a lawyer, it says Don, came up and spoke to him and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said, what does the scripture say? He says, well, love, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your strength, all your mind, all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. He says, do that and live. And it says to justify himself, he says, who's my neighbor? And this is what Jesus is answering. Because he said, do all of that and live, which included, love your neighbor. Your neighbor, you'll find out, is, is whoever is in need. As we read the scripture now, Luke chapter 10, beginning in verse 30, Jesus replied and said, said to him, a certain man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now, I read that that was a descent about 3,000 feet. One guy said it was 17 miles. Another guy said 18. So I'll go in the middle and say it's 17 and a half. He was on a, on a stretch of road that was very dangerous. It says he fell among robbers. They stripped him and beat him and went off leaving him half dead. And by chance... I have an issue with that word by chance. If the Lord directs our step, we all need to pay attention to where we are. Nothing happens by chance. It happens by divine intervention. And by chance, a certain priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, the Levite, also when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan who was on a journey came upon him. When he saw him, he felt compassion. And he came to him, bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. And he put them, him on his own beast. And he brought him to the inn and took care of him. And on the next day, he took out two denarii. And he gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him. Whatever more you spend, when I return, I will pay you. Which one of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among and to the robbers? And he said, the one who showed mercy toward him, and Jesus said to him, go and do the same. Now, the priest and the Levite, they normally get a, a bad rap. But they had religious convictions to keep themselves pure. What they didn't have was a connection with God to tell them what to do. They knew that the priests were descendants of Aaron and they were to minister the people so they had to know what the word of God said. Now how they could take and write a law out that says, I can't touch the unclean or I won't be pure because if you look with me back in Oh, let's see. Let me make get the glasses back. Where to put There they are. Go back to Psalm uh, six, Psalms one hundred nine, verse sixteen. Psalm one hundred nine. I always try to find out what the psalm is related to. They just said it's just related to his life. They couldn't put it to any particular thing about it. But what, what he said in sixteen, he said. Because he did not remember to show loving kindness, but, for pers but persecuted the afflicted and the needy man, <coughs> David asked, and the despondent in heart put him to death. 
You see, the priest and the Levite had an understanding of what the psalm said. It said, make sure that you show loving kindness, because if not, it goes against the heart of God. They knew what Psalm 136 said. Every refrain to every statement in Psalm 136 says, the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. What the priest and the Levite missed as they made up their own rules to make sure they can only take care of those they wanted to, they missed what the Old Testament said. It's David prayed because of the loving kindness and the, the way he treated the needy that he, he's a despondent. He needs to be put to death. These were the priests and Levites who knew the Old Testament. In Proverbs 21, in verse 13, it says, He who shuts his ear to the cry of the poor will also cry himself and not be answered. They knew this, and they failed to turn their ear to the man who was laying on the side of the road. I'm going to tell you, you may be in a situation in life, you may not feel like you're adequate in helping the person who's on the side of the road. But if God moves you, he's going to tell you what to say. He's going to equip you what to do. But don't ever fail show loving kindness to those who are in a despondent part of life. Amen. Now, I met a man early one Thursday morning. He said, Brother, uh, I have a ministry, and can you help me with, uh, and, he, he, and he said, but in my ministry, he said, the Lord told me that I could smoke as long as I wasn't around children and I wasn't in worship. He said, I need to get a ride back over to this store that will sell me cigarettes. I said, you say you were a minister? He said, yes. I said, well, you know the word then that says the righteous don't have to go begging for bread. He said, you're right. He walked on. You see, there are some people just going to try to flim flam. You know? I don't know if that's a word that they use anymore, but that's one that I grew up with. <laughs> but they're, they're going to try to get over on just to get what you have so they can go do what they want with it, which is not going to be God. I see people on the side of the road that says anything will help. God bless you. I saw another man the other day walking with a sign that said, God will provide. You're not trusting him, you're trusting me. There are people out there who can tell you about what they put up, that they're trying to tell you that they love the Lord, but they don't know what the Word of God says. They're trying to get in your Christian sympathies. This guy was beaten on the side of the road. He didn't, he didn't have a choice in this situation. He was walking down a long stretch of road, about 17 miles, where there's lots of curves and lots of rocks and things, that, that it was notorious that people just hide there and wait for some unsuspecting person to come by. He probably knew that, but he had to get somewhere. He didn't have anybody willing to walk with him, so he took off. He got beaten and robbed. Bob says he was half dead. And the priest walked by. He didn't do a thing. The Levite walked by and didn't do a thing. But the Samaritan came. Now, it doesn't say in our story that the man half beaten to death was a Jew. A lot of the commentators I read said he was. It doesn't say, so I don't know how they know. But if he was a Jew, this made this encounter all the more interesting. Because Samaritan and Jews, for a lack of a better word, hated each other. But this man was moved with compassion. Listen, when you hate and God moves you with compassion, you still got to move. You know what's going to happen to your hate? It's going to disappear. 
you minister to that person, that one Jew, if he was Jew, the next one comes back, you're going to have love for him because God's already shown you how to love that person. He showed you how to love that ethnicity, that ethnic group. He showed you how to love that nationality. Some of you had to learn how to love our Burmese, didn't you? Some of you may not have learned to love them yet. When you do, your heart's going to be a whole lot happier, by the way. They're good people. And they have needs sometimes. There's a cabbage in the, in the a refrigerator right now that I'm going to offer to the Burmese when we get here. Because they'll probably want more. They can do more with it than we can. Amen. Listen. It said he, he, he felt compassion. When's the last time? That you saw somebody. I'm asking, the, the, the title of the message is, Where Are We in This Story? When's the last time that you had compassion that moved you to help somebody? When did that happen to you? I'd love to hear your story. Not right now. But I want you to know that you've got a story. If you don't have a story, about the Spirit of God moving you with compassion, then you need to surrender your heart fully to the Spirit of God and live under His authority, and you'll find yourself doing that all the time. Moving with compassion helps them. How do they know who we are? We just walk by them. They thought they were religious men. We may think we're religious people. I don't ever want to be a religious person, by the way. They, we think we're religious because we're doing okay. We've got God's blessings. We've got a roof over our head. I see people all the time who don't have a roof over their head. Lots of times I'll stop and ask them how they got there. And if the Holy Spirit impresses me their story is true, I'm going to help them. You know why? Because I have compassion where God tells me to help them or not. When's the last time you've been moved with compassion? The reason we don't get moved with compassion is because we're thinking about ourselves. You hear me? If you're not moved with compassion, all that means is, is you're thinking just about yourself. I didn't get any amens on that. Amen. Thank you. If you're not moved with compassion because you're so self-centered on who you are, you don't care about anybody else. You see those priests, the Levites, they were kind of self-centered. On their religion. I don't have a religion, by the way. I have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. The life that's empowered by the Holy Spirit. It ain't about religion, folks. It's about a relationship. Amen. You know, when Jesus said this, I go to prepare a place for you, he said, I'll go and prepare that place for you for when I come to get you, you'll be where I'm at. He wanted fellowship with you. He wants that fellowship now. You fellowship with him. It's going to make you mindful of others. I mean, if you're going down the road and you've been to the grocery store and a guy's holding up a sign to eat, you've got bananas in your car, break one off and give it to him. Do something that shows compassion and kindness from your heart. On it. I get in somebody else's vehicle. You know, I listen to 89.1 mile radio. I get in somebody else's vehicle and I hear fish. Christian radio. And they say, listen, join with us in our acts of, in acts of kindness and let us know the acts of kindness you do every day. There's a possibility that you can win $5,000 and $5,000 for your charity. I said, what? Why do you want them to do kindness? You want to pay them to do kindness? God says, let's do kindness. Amen? Amen. It ain't a, I'll never enter their contest. I don't want to get paid for the way I live my life out in the marketplace. I'm not even going to tell them what I do. I'm not going to brag about it. They're just leading people to brag about what they do and get paid for it. Now I know why I just listen to Bob Radio. 
We have to be moved with compassion, people. He didn't just move with compassion. He moved with heart. You see, the man's half dead. He couldn't walk, so he put him on his piece. And he carried it to him. He didn't say, get up walking in the feet. He picked him up and put him on his feet. He put his life into this man. He picked him up, put him on his feet. And he took him to the inn, provided a room for him, ministered to his knees. Oh, by the way, oil and wine at that time, that's kind of like taking Band-Aids and stuff with you. The, it was all antiseptic that he gave him, by the way. It wasn't for a drink. That was just an emergency kit. And he was ready for an emergency. I've got a little thing in my car, but I'm ready for emergencies that people have too. It's got band-aids in it, it's got antiseptic wipes in it, and, and, or if I come on him, I, I, I'm ready. But I just want to help. Are you set up to be ready to help somebody? If you're not, guess what you don't have? You don't have the compassion, the compassion of the Spirit. And you're not ready yet to put your life in it. Do you know what? Jesus put his life to a cross for me. I can put my life to help somebody get on their donkey and take them to the end. Can you do that? If you have compassion and spirit, you can. Not only did that, he took his finances and he said to the man, listen, I'm on a journey. When I come back through, if there's anything else I owe you, I'll pay you. I learned something about this man the other day. He had a reputation for that innkeeper. He had proved himself to be trustworthy. Because there was no debate about whether the man would pay him or not. He, he, he just left and went on his journey. And he said, if you need anything else on the way back, I'll take care of you. But trying to remember two, two denarii, two days later, Two denarii, one denarii, two. two days' wages should have took care of him anyway. But he said, listen, if anything happens, I'll pay it. He made an investment in that man's life. Amen. Let me ask you, whose life have you made an investment in lately? Who have you done that for? I got a guy, when I do my tax paying job, he calls me Thursday, and I call him Friday. I've told him my name, but he sees me every Thursday, so he just calls me Thursday, and I call him Friday. But God moves me to help that man from time to time, and I do. He's a genuine fellow. He'll try to help me any, any time I'm down there. He's just a good guy, but he fell on hard times. He's having a hard time getting off of me. But I'll invest myself into it. I'll take him some day. I'll slip him a little five dollar bill every now and then, just to let him know I'm compassionate towards life, and I'm willing to invest in him to help him get over this situation. When I lived in Texas, I met this elderly man named James. He was sitting out behind. I worked at a drug warehouse. It was a legal one. I think I've told you that before. And there was a there was a uh, talk of the town food warehouse across from the warehouse where I worked at as a seminary student. And we would leave and go get lunch, and the way we went, we went right, right by the town of the house, food warehouse. And there was a guy sitting there with a nail and a rock. He was opening up a can. I just went to the store, I got a lunch, and got him a can open. He didn't have to do with me to first, with, first start with. But I had compassion because I saw what he was doing. I wanted to help. He finally accepted the can of Another day he was sitting, oh, the next time I went to, to lunch, I got two. And I sat down and had lunch with him. We became friends. We got to talk about the Lord. He never wanted to change his life. He said, I don't have any worries out there. He says, I don't have to pay taxes. I don't have to say yes sir, no sir to anybody. I'm just out here living my life. I don't have to worry about a thing. I said, that's the way you want to live. That's okay, but you got to eat. And so every time I went to lunch, 
That is good too, and we'll sit down and eat when we're tired. Why? Because compassion. I'm asking you, what about your life? Where are you showing compassion? Where are you investing in someone? And when are you picking them up and taking care of them down the road? You see, this guy knew the innkeeper. He was trustworthy. This guy shows us, even if there's no love between the, the Jew and the Samaritan, this Samaritan, Samaritan had a higher calling. It was, to, it was to be compassionate. He took care of that man. My question for you today is, what do you want to do? One other thing I want to show you about the Old Testament that says we ought to be involved in being involved in being involved in the lives of people. In Isaiah chapter 58. I believe fasting is an important thing to do. But verse 4 says, Behold, you're, you fast contention and strife to strike with a wicked fist. You do not fast like you do to make your voice heard on high. Is this the fast like this which I choose? It's hard to verse 4. Verse 5 now. A day a man to humble himself is for bowing one and, and his head like a reed and for spreading out sackcloth and ashes as a bed. Will you cast will you call this a fast? An acceptable day to the Lord? He says, is this not a fast which I choose to loosen the bonds of wicked? of wickedness, to undo the bands of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and break every yoke? Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into the house, when you see the naked cover him, and not to hide yourself? Wow. You see, the priest and the Levite knew that too. To divide the, your bread with the hungry, and bring them into the house. That could be your house. That could be the house of the Lord. You know, we're going to have a homecoming June 26th, right? And we're going to have a big feast. What would happen if 10 homeless people showed out there and wanted to eat? What would your heart say to you? Come on in. Because if we don't, there's no compassion in our life. And those who have compassion, who don't show loving kindness and have compassion, the psalmist said, Lord, their prayers won't be answered. Are your prayers feel like they're not getting through lately? And maybe because you're missing compassionate spirit in your life. Again, your compassionate spirit will rise to the top when you quit thinking about yourself and start thinking about others. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I pray that you use it to change our lives and make us more compassionate. Heavenly Father, I, I pray that you use it and enlarge our heart for people that we don't even know. <coughs> Lord, I pray that you Enlarge our eyes so that we can see this world as you see it. Your compassion for us took you all the way to the cross. God, let us be full of compassion to show the love of God, the light of God, and be the salt to the earth. And Lord, <coughs> let it be known that outside of having a relationship with you through Jesus Christ, our lives will be about ourselves. But Lord, if we give our lives to you, there should be a compassionate flavor to our life. Help us live that flavor out. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.